Um, we're now going to speak um, with some people who each have a, a very different relationship with meat, from wild farming to veganism to foraging. Uh, Robert Gooch, director of the Wild Meat Company in Suffolk. Fergus Drennan, uh, Fergus the forager, who spent many years finding food in the wild. Ilted Dunsford, co-founder of Cellular Ag Agriculture Limited, and Joey Carbstrong, a vegan and campaigner. Um, Robert, if I could start with you, the, the Wild Meat Company, uh, what are you doing in order to be an ethical supplier? Well, it's the most sustainable uh, and carbon, uh, carbon neutral way of eating meat, uh, Mariella, really, because um, we are, are har harvesting um, animals that are naturally already in the countryside and, and um, providing it so that people can eat that in a way that doesn't harm the environment. Um, and, and you're a meat eater yourself, I, I presume. I well, am, yeah. So what was your reasoning for the business? Well, there's sort of three three reasons. Um, one is is the the carbon uh, carbon thing. That so the, so the wild meat company produces game species um, for eating, which are not farmed in any way. So they're naturally they were there wild anyway. So they can't uh, can't be um, causing uh, any damage or destruction through inputs. The second uh, second main reason is that they are often shot for for uh, and culled to. Um, uh, because they're seen as pests um, and for example deer which are rapidly growing uh, population in the countryside because they're no natural predators have to be predated by man to avoid road traffic accidents and, and that sort of thing and so um, they're there anyway they're being culled and we must make good use of that meat um, otherwise it just it would just be wasted and the third reason is that for uh, that a lot of people don't like the fact that uh, farm animals uh, are, are travel a long way to go to a slaughterhouse and then have to go through the slaughterhouse experience to be killed uh, before they before they are presented to consumers on the table and that's uh, a third reason why I set up the company and and why many people come to wildmeat.co.uk to buy our meat. Uh, what sort of meat are you talking about? So it's it's venison, uh, deer, rabbits, pigeons. Um, squirrels, um, pheasants, partridges, wild duck, and but, those sorts of... But uh, you must breed them, I mean, in, in to some degree, or, or, <laughs> or are you just living in a part of the countryside that's sort of the, where they run amok? No, I'm afraid most of the countryside is amok with uh, deer. Um, now, they're nocturnal, so you don't often see them, but unfortunately for farmers, uh, foresters, gardeners... Yes, but not on. rabbits, surely. Sorry? But not rabbits. Yes, rabbits are very common and nocturnal, and... <laughs> They cause uh, lots of damage, yeah. Um, and one last question on, on this. I mean, it is much more expensive, isn't it, than supermarket meat? It is more expensive, and that goes back to the question that uh, the issue raised by David Attenborough is that, you know, we can afford sometimes to eat better quality carbon neutral meat, um, uh, whether it's um, um, free range, organic, or wild meat. And that's obviously something that. Uh, people who can afford to, for some reason, decide not to. So they'll spend thousands of pounds on a new car, a big house, or a new holiday, but they'll buy the cheapest meat they can find in the supermarket, which is quite odd. I'm going to go to Joey Carbstrong. Joey, you did change your name, didn't you? I mean, that's not your real name. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, last name's Armstrong. Uh, so. Okay. Um, uh, you, you, but you're a, a vegan and former meat eater. So tell me why you made that decision. Um, I'm a vegan because uh, of, for animal rights mainly, so I couldn't um, sort of stomach the hypocrisy of claiming to care about animals while I had a, a piece of a cow on my plate. It just seemed like cutting up an animal into pieces and eating them is obviously cruel no matter how they were treated. Um, so I know there's a lot of talk about free range and organic and all of these things but essentially for me it, it all comes to a head when the the animals in a slaughterhouse and you know being shot in the head and having their head cut off and disemboweled i feel like that's a, an animal rights violation and for me veganism is about animal rights um the, the environment is talked about a little bit in veganism because it, there was a big study there's a lot of studies coming out there's one large one um in Oxford University there in 2018 40,000 farms 119 countries and it showed that uh uh, a vegan diet is the single biggest way to reduce your impact on planet Earth. And they were saying like, uh, that uh, livestock provides only 18% of calories but takes up 83% of farmland. And we could re reduce the farmland on Earth by more than 75% if we all adopted a vegan diet. But for, for me, it's, a, it's about animal rights. It's about um, the, the animals as sentient beings. 
they don't want to die. The, the, the nicer you treat an animal, the more they want to live. To, so to rob them of their life is, you know, inhumane. Um, the, the hunter had interesting points. Hunting is probably, yeah, more carbon neutral, but I would still say it's not practical for the entire population. I'd still say shooting an animal is needless and cruel. And we could also uh, opt for something like, um, you know, uh, maybe controlling their, their breeding through some type of contraceptive program instead of, uh, instead of killing all these animals. So I try to opt for the plant-based alternatives, you know, like getting people a practical solution that everyone can sort of join in on. You don't have to worry about expensive free-range meat. You can get your beans and rice and legumes and fruits and vegetables. You can buy local fruits and vegetables if, if you want to, but this is something that people in suburban areas, low-income areas can all achieve and we can all make a massive impact like that. But Joey, just uh, one last uh, question on that. I mean, uh, as a vegan, how much effort do you put into what you eat every day? Because a lot of people argue that it's just incredibly time consuming consuming oh well it, well it's a little bit um of work at the start i mean just like trying any new habit you have to you know build a new habit it might take two or three weeks but because here in the uk especially um there's just you go to the plant milk aisle you go to the the plant cheese aisle and you go to the fruits and veg section and most people eat predominantly vegan food anyway that is they realize it's pastas and grains and legumes and bread and vegetables and fruits so like really it's just eliminating certain foods but then um there might be a bit of label check checking that you have to do if you're buying processed food at the start and you know I, I probably recommend choosing more whole foods but it's really it's it, once once you're motivated i feel once you see what happens in uh, factory farms here in england i mean 95 percent of the broiler uh chickens here are in intensive indoor units whatever they want to call it red tractor this red tractor is just the the minimum standard really factory farming here is rife over 90 percent of the pigs are factory farmed and they're all killed in gas chambers the vast majority of pigs are killed in gas chambers and chickens in gas chambers and you know you might see the cows and the the lambs on the countryside all enjoying their time but they all go to the slaughterhouse to be executed uh, no, no one gets to see images of slaughterhouses unless activists go in there and leave cameras and show it to the public so all of this is hidden so i think if you're motivated it's a lot easier easier than if you weren't motivated by what goes on. Well, this is fascinating stuff, and I want you all to stay with me, please. We're just going to go quickly to the news headlines, and then we'll be back. I, I, I want to hear, I've asked you, Joey, about how time-consuming it is being a vegan, but uh, I want to ask Freddie the forager the same question, so stick with us, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes.